This okay? Uh, the time is 6 p.m. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the U.S. 1792 South Orange Brosom Trail John Young Parkway Improvements Public Hearing. My name is Nazir Isaac. I'm the project manager with the Florida Department of Transportation. Help you through our public involvement consultant will be presenting information during the hearing. Tonight's hearing will feature two projects being planned for US 1792 corridor. The first will resurface US 1792 pavement from east of Ham Brown Road to south of Portage Street. The second project will construct a new road to connect the Fen Drive at present Hill Road intersection with the existing Oaks Boulevard intersection at US 1792. The presentation will also briefly touch on a third project that is not currently funded. I'll now turn it over to our moderator for the evening. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, did we get a thumbs up that we have me loud and clear? All right. Bear with me just one second. All right, there we go. All right, uh, my name is Eric Troll and I will be your moderator for the, uh, the this public hearing. Uh, the hearing is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about uh, the project and provide input. Uh, this hearing is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar and over the phone. If you dialed in today on the telephone line, uh, the PowerPoint presentation is available on both project web pages. Uh, the first is www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 4452101-1, and that is for the resurfacing project, or you can visit www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 4184-03-6 uh, for the project proposing a new road. Apologize here. Uh, for online participants, the GoToWebinar control panel should be visible in the upper right corner of your computer screen. Uh, if you're joining uh, GoToWebinar on your mobile device, simply tap on the screen to display the same options. Uh, the question box can be found in the middle of either of these menus. Uh, you can type a comment or question into that question box uh, and then simply send to submit your comment or question to staff. Documents uh, and comment forms for this public hearing can be found on the control panel section labeled handouts. Uh, click the handouts icon to see the available handouts and simply click on the file name to download. If you happen to experience a technical issue during this hearing, please uh, type it into the uh, question box on the control panel on GoToWebinar to report it. Or you may send an email to Carolyn Fitzwilliams at dot.state.fl.us. And I'll spell that out for you. It's C A R O L Y N dot F I T Z W I L L I A M 
at dot.state.fl.us uh, to report any of those, those problems. Or you may call 386 943 5215, and staff will do their best to assist you. We encourage you, uh, your input and feedback about this project. All public comments and questions are part of the public record, and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by May 27th, 2021, 14 days after this public hearing, uh, these will become part of the project's public hearing record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing following the hearing. This public hearing is being recorded, and a recording of this presentation will be posted on the project's webpage within one week following this hearing. There are multiple ways to submit uh, comments or questions. You can either make verbal or spoken comments. If attending in person, please fill out a speaker request card so that we know you wish to speak at the podium during the public comment period. If attending on GoToWebinar, please type your name and the words, I wish to speak in the question panel on GoToWebinar's control panel. When your name is called, uh, you will need to unmute yourself on the GoToWebinar control panel before speaking. Lastly, if attending as a dial-in participant, you can call the project manager at 386. 943-5547 to provide verbal comments after the public hearing. Bear with me for just one second. It does not want to switch slides here. <laughs> There we go, apologies. Uh, for those in attendance at the in-person location, you can complete a printed comment form. Uh, if you are participating online, you can submit written comments in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments can also be submitted on the Resurfacing Project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 4452101. Or www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 418403 6 for the project proposing a new road. You can also contact the project manager, Nazaru Isaac, directly by email at nazaru.isaac, and that's N A Z I R U dot Isaac, I A or I S rather. AAC at dot.state.fl.us or by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station number 552, Deland, Florida 32720. This contact information will also be available on the public hearing notification that you may have received by mail. I apologize for the back and forth on the presentation here. It's, uh, it's lagging a little bit. We're, we're making this a little more entertaining than, <laughs> than it otherwise would be. Appreciate the patience. I'm actually going to stop sharing for one second and see if we can't get this back in action. All right. Let's give this a go. Bear with me one second here. All right, well, it's catching up. Um, the, uh, the Florida Department of Transportation uh, is required to comply with various non-discrimination laws 
uh, and regulations, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited uh, without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, or disability, uh, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, the Title VI coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, by phone, at 386-943-5367 or email at jennifer.smith, the number two, and I'll spell that for you. It's J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R dot Smith, S-M-I-T-H, the number two at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Jacqueline Paramore the state six title coordinator by mail at uh, 605 Swanee Street, mail station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399, or by phone at 850 414 4753, or by email at at dot.state.us. Let me just get this back going here. Appreciate the patience, everyone. All right. Uh, this information is shown at the sign in table uh, at the in person location on the project website and the hearing notifications. We'll just leave that up if anybody needs to take a look for one second with a little technical difficulties there. This public hearing was advertised in the Florida Administrative Registrar on FDOT's public notice website, the Osceola News Gazette, and on the project webpage. In addition, adjacent property owners, interested individuals, elected and appointed officials, and government agencies were also notified about this public hearing. There are three projects currently being planned for the US 1792 corridor area just south of downtown Kissimmee. The first is a repaving project uh, on US 1792 from Ham Brown Road to Portage Street. The second project is a new road to connect Pleasant Hill Road with US 1792 that bypasses the intersection. This is called a quadrant road. The third project, widening US 1792, includes a flyover connecting Pleasant Hill Road and US 1792. This project is currently not funded for construction. Tonight's hearing will focus on the repaving project and the new road. The first project we'll look at tonight is a repaving project on US 1792, Orange Blossom Trail, John Young Parkway. We're going to do a little switcheroo here. I apologize, everyone.
graphics card is struggling. I'm sorry. Uh, the project limits are Ham Brown Road to the west uh, and Portage Street to the north in Kissimmee, uh, Osceola County. Uh, this project will help extend uh, the life of the existing roadway and improve safety uh, for pedestrians. In addition to repaving, this project will construct concrete islands to facilitate new pedestrian crosswalks and widen some right turn lanes to accommodate bicycle through lanes. The project also includes drainage improvements, shoulder widening, new sh sidewalk construction, curb ramp reconstruction to comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, pedestrian lights at crosswalks, and traffic signal upgrades. One of the improvements that's taking place alongside the repaving is the construction of new sidewalks uh, to fill existing gaps where possible. Computer's not being easy on me this evening, folks. I apologize. <laughs> We're gonna try and share this one more time. Bear with me. Greatly appreciate your patience here. Eric, I can take over for you. Great, let's do that. Thank you. All right, Carolyn has, is nice enough to, uh, to take over the, the share for me. We're on slide 34. Not the kind of entertainment we wanted to give you this evening, but nonetheless, try and, try and have a little bit of humor about the technology issues. 34 or 36? Uh, uh, sidewalk slide, so that's uh, one of those, yes. Beautiful. All right, let's do this smoothly so I don't have to stop. I appreciate your patience, everyone. <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll start this slide over again. Uh, so one of the improvements taking place alongside the repaving is the construction of new sidewalks to fill existing gaps where possible. Uh, on the north side of US 1792, from Bryant Street to east of Pleasant Hill Road, from Pleasant Hill Road to east of the Oaks Boulevard, and from east of John Henry Jones Boulevard to Relane. On the south side of US 1792, new sidewalks will be built to fill in gaps from Orange Vista Boulevard to east of Westgate Drive, from west of Orange Lane to Lake Lane, from the Oaks Boulevard to Harris Boulevard, and from Hacienda Circle to east of West Palmetto Avenue. Beautiful. All right, we're moving now. The pedestrian safety improvements continue at the intersection of US 1792 and Pleasant Hill Road. The median on the west side of Pleasant Hill Road uh, will be extended to facilitate a new pedestrian crosswalk. The pedestrian island on the north a northeast corner uh, will be rebuilt to accommodate multiple crossings, and a pedestrian island will be added to the southwest corner. Crossings will also be added to, uh, to all corners uh, connecting every side of the intersection. At the intersection of US 1792 and the Oaks Boulevard, pedestrian safety improvements are enhanced with the new sidewalk construction that we previously mentioned. Medians along US 1792 will be modified to facilitate new pedestrian crosswalks, and crossings will also be added across all corners of the intersection. These same improvements are proposed for the intersection of US 1792 and Hacienda Circle, 
with the inclusion of new sidewalk connections. Uh, the eastern medians along US 1792 will be modified to facilitate new pedestrian crosswalks, and pedestrian crossing will also be added through that median, connecting all corners of that intersection as well. So in addition to these pedestrian improvements, uh, intersection improvements are being proposed to increase safety and help reduce congestion until the new, new road project uh, can be built. We'll talk about more about that project in just a few minutes. Congestion currently occurs at this intersection due to the large volume of vehicles traveling northbound on Pleasant Hill Road and turning east onto US 1792, uh, combining with those already traveling eastbound on Pleasant Hill Road uh, in the morning hours. In the evening, the opposite is true, with a large number of vehicles traveling westbound on US 1792, turning south onto Pleasant Hill Road. Oftentimes, uh, congestion isn't necessarily caused by the number of lanes in a road, uh, but rather the ability to move cars through an intersection. Since the intersection of US 1792 and Pleasant Hill Road was last improved, the number of vehicles has increased with growth in the area. That growth has created some pinch points leading to the congestion. Uh, and for instance, while there are two through lanes on US 1792 in each direction, vehicles uh, oftentimes back up waiting to get into the turn lane, blocking those through lanes. This drastically reduces the number of vehicles the intersection can accommodate during a light cycle as cars driving through the intersection are unable to safely pass these turning vehicles. The repaving project affords us the ability to improve the intersections currently contributing to congestion on the US 1792 corridor. Starting with vehicles headed east towards Pleasant Hill Road, the project proposes adding an additional through lane, so that's three in total, uh, as well as adding new turn lanes for those headed southbound on Pleasant Hill. The northbound turn lane will remain. Continuing east, traveling from Pleasant Hill Road to the Oaks Boulevard, there are only two through lanes currently. The repaving project will continue the additional third through lane. This will help move more vehicles through these two intersections uh, more efficiently, reducing congestion on the corridor. A new turn lane will also be built, enabling those entering businesses or the Oaks community uh, to turn right more easily without impeding uh, the through vehicles. And this left turn will remain. The intersection improvements continue uh, for those traveling westbound towards Pleasant Hill Road as well. Here, two existing through lanes will remain. However, as mentioned earlier, one of the biggest challenges that is currently uh, facing the, the corridor is vehicles backing up and often impeding vehicles in the through lane. By modifying the median, the left turn lanes onto Pleasant Hill will be extended back beyond the Oaks Boulevard intersection. This enables westbound vehicles to proceed unimpeded, making the intersection more efficient. One left and one right turn lane remain at the Oaks Boulevard intersection. And the right turn lane onto northbound Pleasant Hill is largely unchanged. Design of these improvements to enhance US 1792 corridor is expected to finish in late 2021 at an estimated cost of 850,000. All improvements will be constructed within the existing right-of-way. Construction is anticipated to begin in summer of 2022 at an estimated cost of $7.8 million. The financial project identification number for this project is 4452101. While the repaving project addresses an immediate need to improve the surface of the roadway, as well as other enhancements, the second project we'll look at tonight is proposing a larger improvement, uh, constructing a new road to connect Pleasant Hill Road and US 1792 that bypasses the intersection. Uh, this is called a quadrant road. The new road will loop around businesses on the southeast corner of US 1792 and Pleasant Hill Road intersection. It will connect at Fern Drive to the west and to the existing entry to the Oaks Boulevard uh, on the east. The Oaks Boulevard will be shifted south and wind into the community from the new road. 
The Oaks Boulevard will also connect to businesses at the southeast corner of the intersection, which are currently a challenge to navigate to. The new road project came to fruition as an intermediate solution to address the growth southeast of Kissimmee. It is consistent with the long-term plans to widen US 1792 and create a two-way flyover at Pleasant Hill Road. This project is not currently funded for construction. But before diving into the details of the new road, let's take a step back for a short update on this third project. One element has been added to the flyover uh, widening project since the public hearing on October 27th, 2016. Developed from a public request, uh, Orange Lane will be extended south from Forest Drive to O'Berry Road if the flyover and widening project moves forward. And the purpose of this is to ensure the neighborhood has direct access to US 1792. Circling back to focus on the new road, the goal of the new road is to improve operations and safety on the US 1792 and Pleasant Hill Road intersection, to implement fiscally responsible solutions and advance short-term solutions, to maintain adjacent business access and site circulation, to improve access and travel direction opportunities for the Oaks neighborhood residents, and to provide multimodal access consistent with the corridor context. As part of these improvements, right-of-way acquisition is needed for the new road project. However, no relocations are anticipated. Department representatives will contacted, uh, contact affected owners directly. All acquisitions will follow the Federal Uniform Relocation Act and FDOT real estate acquisition process. Building off a number of previously completed traffic studies, new counts were collected. Traffic projections looking forward to the date of the opening of the new road uh, were calculated from the recent traffic counts using two different methods. The major operational improvement on the corridor focuses on decreasing intersection delays. When looking at the intersections within the project scope, the new road will save nearly three minutes in the morning during peak commuter traffic. Similarly, uh, these time savings are projected for the project's intersection during the evening commute, with the savings of nearly two minutes traveling through the corridor. So, how will this new road enhance the quality of the roadway and improve the intersection's effectiveness? By relocating 80% of the existing northbound to eastbound, as well as westbound to southbound movements uh, from the US 1792 and Pleasant Hill Road intersection to the new roadway. It simplifies the main intersection, which allows for shorter light cycles. Turning movements within the intersection will be reduced to about 20% of the previous volume to accommodate vehicles wishing to visit businesses within the intersection. The new roads coordinated traffic signals uh, enable smoother and faster times through the corridor while freeing up the intersection of US 1792 uh, to more effectively and efficiently focus on other vehicle movements. With an understanding of why we are proposing the new road, let us examine some of the details of the plan. To start, uh, on Pleasant Hill Road, the median opening just south of Fern Drive will be closed to accommodate new northbound turn lanes onto the new road. Following the construction of the new road, vehicles will simply proceed south to the next opening before making their U-turn north. The morning commute has the largest volume of vehicles traveling northbound on Pleasant Hill Road before traveling east on US 1792. With the implementation of the new road, two new 1,000-foot uh, right turn lanes will be uh, built approaching the new road. This more than doubles the length of the current turn lanes at Pleasant Hill. This will enable vehicles traveling uh, towards downtown Kissimmee to be able to easily wait at the light and ensure uh, excess vehicles are not blocking those who wish to travel straight through the intersection, as we have shown at the beginning of the presentation. Drivers will then enter the new four-lane divided roadway, approximately three-tenths of a mile long, 
and the lights through the corridor will be synced to allow for drivers to easily navigate through the new road onto eastbound US 1792. Shifting to peak evening, evening traffic, the largest percentage of vehicles on the corridor travel west on US 1792 before they turn south onto Pleasant Hill Road. The new road will be built on some of the improvements uh, that have been implemented during the repaving. Uh, but the largest improvement drivers will see as they approach the new road intersection is the existing left turn lane. Uh, currently, that measures just under 500 feet. Following the construction of the new road, two left turn lanes will be extended by nearly uh, or extended by 500 feet, nearly the length of the turn lanes at the intersection of US 1792 and Pleasant Hill Road uh, at the current time. These new turn lanes almost double their current length uh, and will provide sufficient area for folks headed westbound to wait to turn without in, uh, impeding traffic, as we've seen earlier. Similar to the, the morning traffic pattern, uh, the evening travel path will feature synced traffic signals, enabling smooth passage from US 1792 through the new road and onto southbound Pleasant Hill Road. Finally, uh, the new road project enables the expansion and connectivity of multimodal access to the Oaks neighborhood and includes a 10 foot wide shared use path on each side of the new road. These paths will connect uh, the Oaks to the Greater Osceola uh, County Trail Network, particularly the Pleasant Hill multi-road uh, or multi-use path rather uh, that currently runs south to Polk County. Future trails are planned uh, by the county and they could connect the Oaks to downtown Kissimmee and beyond. Design of these improvements to enhance the US 1792 and Pleasant Hill Road intersection is expected to finish in summer of 2022 at an estimated cost of $1.3 million. Right away will be refunded in the spring of 2022 through the flyover project, which has a financial project identification number of 418403-3 at an estimated cost of $24.8 million. Construction is anticipated to begin in summer of 2024 at an estimated cost of $11.1 million. And the financial project identification number for this uh, new road project is 418403-6. It is the project team's goal to maximize the time in between the repaving project and the new road in order to minimize the impacts on the community. To close, uh, this animation uses the collected data and forecasted traffic volumes to illustrate what peak times are likely to resemble in the year 2031. For those of you joining us on the phone uh, or those that wish to review this video again, it can be found on the project's website. And this first movement highlights a common morning route uh, traveling north on Pleasant Hill Road. And turning on to the new road. Passing the Oaks Boulevard here. And finally approaching uh, US 1792 to turn east. The second movement highlights a common evening route. Uh, so we're traveling west on US 1792 and turning onto the new road. And get passing the, the new Oaks Boulevard intersection. And finally turning south on the Pleasant Hill Road.
Now we're seeing the drive into the Oaks Boulevard, the new road that'll weave into the community through the guard tower. And finally, uh, this movement features the exit uh, heading back towards John Young Parkway on the Oaks Boulevard. We'll now enter the formal public comment period for this project. Anyone desiring to make a verbal statement regarding the project will now have the opportunity to speak. Please note, to ensure all who wish to speak are able to, uh, all questions and comments will be responded to in writing following the public hearing. Remember, if you want us to uh, leave a verbal comment or question over the phone, please call the FDOT project manager at 386-943. 5215 after the meeting. Again, you can provide verbal comments and questions in one uh, of multiple ways. The comment at the in-person, uh, I'm sorry, to comment at the in-person location, uh, you can state your, your comments at the microphone. You will need to speak a, uh, submit a speaker request card if you have not already done so. Uh, please raise your hand and one of our staff will provide you with a speaker request card to complete. If you are joining us online, use the GoToWebinar control panel. You can request to speak by typing in the words, I wish to speak alongside your name in the question box on the control panel. The last way to comment verbally is to call the project manager once again at 386-943-5547 after the public hearing and dorm during normal business hours. Uh, with that, I will turn it back over to Nazaru Isaac for the in-person public comments. Okay. We'll now call upon in-person participants who have requested to speak. Please come to the microphone when your name is called and state your name and address. If you represent organization, uh, municipality, or other public body, please provide that information as well. We ask that you limit your comments to three minutes. Please keep in mind that we'll be responding to all comments in writing following the meeting. The first speaker card is for Jeffrey Rice. Hey, that's only two minutes and 44 seconds. So we have three minutes, right? Um, take this off. Uh, my name is Jeff Rice. Uh, I live in the Oaks, uh, 2113 Bunker View Court. Uh, since I only have two minutes and 44 seconds, I'm going to try to make it quick. Um, my first thing is, first thing I want to say is that uh, I love the presentation. It was a good Sunday morning drive, because uh, it's really not what we experience every day driving on John Young Parkway. Um, I want to thank you for inviting us to this presentation. It's not really a hearing. Uh, it's more of a presentation, uh, in my estimation. Uh, and I think one of the problems I'm going to try to state, because uh, I'm quite sure there's other people who want to come uh, after me, is that um, I think one of the reasons uh, your um, design here um, doesn't work is, is because I think that your study was flawed. Um, if you look at it, um, what is it, 36, 37 million dollars uh, for two minutes of saving, so three minutes, roughly 12, 13 million dollars a second. Um, so, how do I know it's flawed? Well, maybe you can help me out here. When I started looking at your analysis, uh, and I looked at your graphs, they're really pretty, um, but I looked at it and they talk about uh, delay at the intersection. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Um, is that just how long the light lasts or what? Uh, second of all, when you start looking at the bar charts, again, they're very pretty. Uh, it talks about AM travel time of 7.2 minutes. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that means, because uh, usually travel time, right, is uh, time and distance, but there's no distance here. So is that 7.2 minutes a foot uh, or 7.2 7 .2 minutes, uh, 30, 30 feet? What is it? Um, so in closing, um, 
I don't think this is going to work for uh, for anybody that lives in the Oaks, especially. Uh, but it's definitely not going to cure any of the issues that we have. I do like the repaving project, though. I think that's going to help a lot from a safety perspective. Uh, but this particular project, um, when you look at it uh, and you add in the experience of the people here who drive that corridor uh, every day, um, we, we can look at it quickly and realize that it's really not going to save anybody any time at all. And in fact, it may just uh, make make the problem or the issue worse. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to come out of this hearing or presentation, whatever you want to call it, um, but I hope that at, at some point uh, someone uh, takes an ear and listens to the people in the community. I'm big on community activism, and what I'll say to the community, the way to show your uh, issues or problems with this is to vote. Next time is to vote. So those commissioners, those politicians that are out there who are not considering what we think and what we feel, that's how you show them what we feel. And that's at the ballot box. So I encourage all of you here, all of you online, uh, during the next election, make your voice heard, uh, make it heard loudly. Uh, otherwise, we're going to continue to get this type of push uh, without any representation. So thank you. Yeah, the second uh, is Jim Messon. Jim Mason, 1755 South John Young Parkway. Uh, looking at this, just kind of floors me that we're wasting our money, my taxpayer money, all of you taxpayer money on something that's not going to alleviate anything. I work on that road, been there for 35 years, and what's been happening in the state not coming in and fixing our problem. Our representatives obviously don't really care about this because we still have a problem. They were supposed to start on this project 2008. We were at a meeting in 2016. And they were working on the funding then. Now we're saying that they don't have the funding? Come on. I mean, it's it's got to stop. Uh, if you drive that road every day, these poor people have got to drive home. And it's backed up from 192 to Pleasant Hill Road is utterly ridiculous. I think the money that they're spending, $50 million, is a joke. It's not going to help anything. I'd, it'd be great if it's going to help something. But I think it's a waste of money. I you know, just uh, think that our representatives, and like the other gentleman said, we need to start voting, and we need to find some representatives that's going to represent us, the people that have to deal with this every day. Uh, it's my opinion, you know, and and I think something needs to be done. This isn't it. I think it's a big waste of money. Thank you. Uh, the third is uh, Tim Hayes. Hello, my name is Tim Hayes. I'm a resident of uh, the Oaks, 1800 Oaks Boulevard. I've already submitted my comments in writing to you, but I just think this design is very ill-conceived, as the others have said. You notice when we came in, there was a uh, gathering around the around the uh, illustration there and everyone was objecting to all sorts of elements on the plan that uh, the representatives really couldn't speak to. Um, we have a, a new community being developed just down the road past Harris Boulevard and I believe it's going to be over 500 uh, homes in there. There's the potential of having more homes built in the Oaks uh, that hopefully will uh, subside but that's still a risk, and I think you have um, really not improved anything. You've you've made these wonderful pedestrian trails, which is great, but do you really need to allow 10 feet on both sides of the road for pedestrians? Just seems like it's a misdirection of of where the dollars should go. The problem we have is for motorists. We can't get the the it does the roadways don't have the capacity to handle the traffic 
Uh, I wish some of the engineers that are here, including yourself perhaps, might on your way back home, might drive down towards Pleasant Hill and kind of see what you would encounter at this time of day. Um, it's really, it's really uh, pretty rough. And I think you're introducing more congestion by adding these additional traffic lights. I think the new Fern Road or New Road, that's a great addition. But uh, speaking as a resident of uh, the Oaks, I think the exit from the Oaks onto John Young is, is no improvement. And we're just gonna have, we're just gonna share that road now with all the folks who are heading south on uh, Pleasant Hill. So anyhow, um, I, think it's, I think it's a disaster. I, I hope that there's some way it can be modified to respond to all the complaints that have been raised today. Thank you. The fourth is um, Desmond Han. Desmond Hunt, 2211 The Oaks Boulevard. Um, I'm very concerned about the things that we're seeing right now. Um, I just wanted to know, the ones who came up with this idea, do they live in the Oaks? That's what I want answered. That's what we all want answered. Because we're the ones that have to deal with this. We're not outsiders. You know, you know we travel these roads every morning and it's a horror every night when we come back home from, like the gentleman said, from 192 all the way to the Oaks Boulevard. And I invite them to be able to take that road from 192 anytime from 3.30 on. Try try 5 o'clock, try 6 o'clock, try 7 o'clock. Okay, now there's going to be a surge of people from these new developments that are going on and they have the audacity to talk about the Oaks wanting to add more homes in the Oaks. Now, this plan was drawn up, if I remember, if, if I'm wrong, cor correct me, about three years ago. So many things have happened since then. You have this residence, that resident, that resident. What happens when there's an accident? Now, can you imagine what's going to happen later when there's an accident and our good old Kissimmee police shut down the road or only one lane can go down? I heard about the flyover. That's the horror. Who thinks of these things? One lane, it should be a minimum of two each way. It should be a minimum of two each way. So that should be a consideration. This is common sense. If you have one going this way and one going that way, it's waste. Why not drop another lane on both sides? Okay, now, um, the other thing was, the letter was so nicely put together and it's so nice how they put things in words. It says right here, a quadrant road is an innovative in intersection design that allows for better mobility. This is not true. It's not true for now. It may have been true when they wrote it three years ago, but it's not true now. And who's going to suffer? All of us. Now it says, and it says it will help reduce the time spent in traffic signals. You guys added two more signals. So now we have four. We have the Oaks and Pleasant Hill. Now we're gonna have another one over here and another one over here on Pleasant Hill. I mean, come on. It's, it's just straight up, it's just straight up common sense. Um, now what happens when all of these residents are going to the supermarket? What happens? Okay, what happens when they have more school buses now because there's more children? What happens? So I'm just saying, please consider what we're saying. And also, it's really sad that they didn't let us know about this earlier. They already did everything. So this is just basically a formality because they're gonna do whatever they're gonna do anyway. And that's the sad thing. Anyway, my time is up and uh, I hope this falls on ears that are listening and not deaf ears. Uh, the fifth is uh, uh, Tricia Vanderpey. Good evening, uh, Tricia Vanderbeck. I live in the Oaks, 3016 Boating Boulevard. 
And um, my first request is to get the project schedule for the Quadrant Road project. I don't know if that's available on your website on the link for the project. Yes, over. The actual construction schedule. Is that a yes? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll provide the uh, response. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. And my other concern is about the maintenance of the new areas that is shown in your drawings to include new detention ponds. My question is who would be responsible for the litter cleaning, um, the mosquito treatments, um, and just the general maintenance of the entire area since you're bringing 80% of the turning traffic into our neighborhood and closer to our neighborhood. Also not addressed in your plan is what will happen um, with regards to addressing the noise, the additional noise that'll be coming in closer to the home since I don't see any proposal in your plan um, for noise reduction with regards to new trees or walls or anything of that nature. Um, so we'll have a, a noisier, more polluted community um, with areas to maintain, um, which I don't know that how that improves our community. And um, the area that you're proposing to put the detention ponds is actually an area where the uh, bald eagles in our neighborhood nest right now and you'll be removing their nesting homes and removing their habitats. And I don't know if anybody's considered that in your design and proposal um, with regards to how you'll be affecting the local wildlife in the community. And um, there will be development of the golf course in the Oaks coming soon that will be increasing probably an additional 3000 vehicles into the community. And I'd like to know if your plan is going to be accounting for that. And also, since you're taking 80% of the turning, turning traffic off of John Young and putting it into our community, um, have you considered what emergency access for emergency vehicles into our community will be? Since this is the single entrance and exit to our community at this point, there is no other way to enter or exit our community. So I hope that's being considered. And um, I think as the gentleman before me stated, um, we have increased volume because our community is developing at a very, very rapid rate. And this is not just about turning lanes and moving people through a turning intersection. This is about volume and accommodating more volume and not having that third lane in each direction from Patrick Street down to Pleasant Hill, I think is part of the major problem. And I think like someone said earlier, to spend $37 million um, of taxpayer dollars to save, you know, seconds doesn't make sense as much as it does to help with the volume issues that we're facing in the community. Thank you. Um, the next is uh, Janet Puri. Hello, my name is Janet Hooley. I live at 1700 Brassy Court in the Oaks. As you've already heard, the major problem is sheer volume of traffic. I'd like to know if the study included a five mile radius of the intersection of Pleasant Hill and John Young. I'd like to know the uh, number of vehicles uh, counted in those studies and when that most recent state that uh, study was started and completed. I'd also like to know the number of accidents on 1792 John Young OBT, Pleasant Hill Road, as well as the number of fatalities. Because I know from my own experience, having lived in the Oaks for almost 20 years now, I can name quite a few and most of them had fatalities. Some of them were somewhat epic and memorable. If you're gonna be turning 80% of the volume of traffic coming out of Kissimmee, headed to Point Sienna, through my neighborhood, you're talking about more, uh, you're, you might as well make it I-4, because that's what you're doing. Now, I came across information today that uh, we've long held that the biggest problem of the traffic flow is that Poinciana has to come through Kissimmee 
to get to the turnpike or I-4. The turnpike is only two miles from Poinciana and has long needed an access at, South, at Southport. Now I understand the property owner that would allow the completion of Southport to the turnpike is willing to sell and has been trying to approach the Osceola County executives to complete a sale. That would alleviate, alleviate a large volume of traffic coming out of Poinciana into Kissimmee. It won't solve all of our problems, but it will diminish a uh, design of the intersection and the quadrant road is a good three to five years behind. If it were completed today, it still would not have handled the volume of traffic coming through uh, Kissimmee and headed south and west. Really what you're doing with this quadrant road is creating a parking lot. With a series of lights, all you're doing is stopping, starting and stopping traffic. It's a, a volume of, if, it were, if the traffic were a flow of water, we've got a flood. Thank you. The next one is uh, Mark Peters. Hello, my name is Mark Peters, 4315 Beale Court. It seems like most of the speakers here today have been from the Oaks, but um, and their, their comments is very much so valid as you're taking this road into their neighborhoods. But pretty much what you're doing is bringing all of us through their neighborhoods. I live south on Pleasant Hill in Brighton Lakes, and we have been, I've been living there for 20 years and I've seen the traffic multiply exponentially. But over the past two years, going into 2021, I'm in real estate and I've seen the ex explosion of growth. All that traffic, all it's doing is passing through this area that you're creating. And we have additional stoplights that's been placed on Pleasant Hill Road that we see the backup it's causing. You guys are telling us that you've run scenarios with computers and these traffic lights somehow is gonna move traffic faster. If you're stopping traffic for X amount of minutes, seconds, we see the delay on Pleasant Hill. If someone gets a little bit of a hesitant in moving their traffic along, it starts to back up quickly. So you're gonna stop traffic for a minute, 30 seconds, whatever it is for these lights to move traffic through. It's not gonna help the traffic that's gonna keep backing up. And pretty much all you're doing is moving the traffic through the intersection of Pleasant Hill and John Young to take it to Portage, to take it up the road where it's gonna back up there. Your solution is only temporarily moving a problem. It's like creating a detour. And I think all you guys are doing is making this, doing, spending all this money to create a detour for the flyover. And that's what you're doing right now in, for the future plans. I think your focus, which you've spent a lot of money and these design plans take forever. As you said, back in 2016, I'm, I remember meeting you guys in Valencia and this project of this new road was supposed to have been done in 2025. That's what I remember being told, 2025 completion, not 2025 starting. And now your starting is gonna take another 18 months. So 2026 to 2027, we're looking at completion. You're talking about six years more of tremendous growth in the area. This road is obsolete before it even started. And what are we gonna do with South? South is exploding, exploding with growth. You're, nothing is, I think you shift the, this project, all this money, even with the flyover, because I think the repaving is a great help. It's expanding the lanes, it's gonna move traffic along, it's gonna create safety. We need pedestrian crosswalks, because I don't know who designed the intersection with one part of crosswalk, people cross the road with little kids all the time. So that's a great improvement and it's welcome, can't come fast enough. But focus this money that you're spending, which I think is a waste, because once the flyover is built, this road that you just spent all this money is not going to be used. And the Oaks is going to have a road in their place. Focus the money in the more south and move the people in Point Siena out, away from Pleasant Hill. Um, 
I don't know if there's an additional card out there. Yes. Go ahead. Do you have your card there? My name is Linda Thies, resident of the Oaks, Shingle Creek Reserve, 3124 Bass Boat Way. First, I just want to say thank you for inviting us. Your presentation thought was very unrealistic. I understand that the engineer, the design, are in more north of us, so they're not living where we are. And unless you live in the Oaks, unless you live in our area, you have no idea. You don't travel those roads. You're not there in the mornings. You're not trying to make it home from Orlando, let's say. You're not trying to go to the food store that should only take you 10 minutes. This is a Band-Aid. It's a very expensive Band-Aid. I came out with about 37.2 million. And that 37.2 million, you want to put 80% of the traffic through our community. That's kind of insult to injury. We're already fighting now to save what we have. And now you want to do this. You think that's going to help our home values? Not. I don't think you took into account Osceola Village that's being built. I didn't think you took into account maybe the 1,500 more vehicles just from them. I don't think you took into the account the possible maybe 3,000, 3,500 more that may come from the Oaks. I don't think you took into consideration the townhomes that are being built or hopefully won't be built at the Bellagio. I don't think you took into consideration that with COVID now coming east, there'll be more cars from people who have been working at home that are now gonna be going back to their jobs. I don't think you took a lot of things into consideration. I think you did what you thought would be easier, but it's not because you didn't take into consideration that when these new communities go up, you don't think that there's gonna be commercial going up? Absolutely. That would be foolish not to think that. So now you have the communities, we're gonna add more commercial. That's gonna bring in more people. It's gonna bring in more vehicles. I think this really needs to be thought out I don't think that this is going to solve too many problems. I think in another three years, you're going to go, oh, gee, we need to add another lane. You're going to put that in the 80% that's going through our development now. I really think that before this starts, I really think, and I invite, I invite somebody to come to my house and leave my house at 7 in the morning. And then I want them to leave my house at about 11 or 1. And I want them to leave my house and try to get to the Publix across the street. And I want them to leave my house and then go to Orlando and then try to get back home. This isn't a fix because you're not taking into consideration the thousands and thousands of more vehicles that are in our proximity. I thank you for your time, but that's a lot of money to waste on a Band-Aid. Um, I, just have, uh, I just have a couple questions. Okay, um, I wanna make sure I get your information so that way we can respond to you. Yeah, That's sure. That's why we're feeding this yeah. card here. Yeah. <clears throat> just please, if you can feed this card and get your information. So yeah, I just have a, a couple uh, questions. My name is Norm Kalpa. I live in the Oaks, 1972 Fairway Loop. My questions have to do with the traffic lights. 
We were told earlier this evening that there's this new technology on the traffic lights to help move the flow through. My first question is, has that technology been tried on the existing lights to help things out? If not, why not? The technology is going to help when new, new lights are in. Why can't it help now? The other question I have has to do with, with the flyover. And the last one of the last uh, slides you showed uh, showed the flyover ending right about Fern Avenue. What's going to happen to the light there? Are you going to block off the, the flyover with the traffic light? Or is that light going to be gone? because you need to get the flyover out. So that's this whole project is worthless. Thank you. Do we have another card? That's it. OK. Um, so this concludes our in-person speakers. I'll now turn it back to over to Eric Itro for uh, public comment on our online participants. Thank you very much, Nazaru. Uh, we will now call upon any online participants who have requested to speak. Uh, when your name is called, you will need to unmute your microphone using the GoToWebinar uh, control panel buttons shown on the side. If the microphone button is orange, that means you need to unmute yourself. If it is green, uh, it means that your microphone is ready for you to speak. Please state your name and address. If you represent an organization, a municipality, or other public body, please provide that information as well. Finally, we ask that you limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, the first person I will call is uh, Maynard Sadler. Uh, if you could uh, unmute yourself and go ahead and speak. No, we have you on mute right now. Let me see if we can't get that uh, resolved for you. sent a request okay. to you to, to unmute. There we go. Okay. Go for it. Thank you. Great now. Thank you so very much. Uh, thanks for inviting us and um, uh, appreciate everyone who turned out in support of the opposition to what it is that you want to implement. Now, if you, and this is not directed at you, Eric, or <laughs> the other gentleman there or any representative, but there's a saying, if you want to see money wasted, you just hand it being done. I think it's a big waste. Now, differently uh, from the other speakers and observers that live here in the Oaks, by the way, I live at uh, 2117 Bunker View Court here in the Oaks. I do believe the traffic lights are going to work right within the intersection though, just within the intersection. And that's why to Janet's question, what studies have been made in a five mile radius around us? They will work. I think you'll save a few seconds, maybe not the 40 something or the 107 in the mornings. They'll work. But then what do you do with that traffic? Once you open the roads and you dump the traffic, the 80 percent, onto uh, John Young, where do they go? I heard nothing about the uh, expansion of the bridge, the redoing of the bridge above uh, the Speedway gas station there. It's the biggest bottleneck in the morning. When you leave the Oaks or you turn right off of Pleasant Hill onto John Young, the traffic backs up right out of the Oaks right now. If you dump that amount of traffic that you're considering right now off of Pleasant Hill, it is going nowhere fast because unless you address the bottleneck up at that bridge, nothing is going to work. But with all that said, it is a total waste of money. The flyover as well is a waste of money. But beyond that, you are putting, you are making these changes, proposing these changes and possibly making them in our neighborhood, a residential neighborhood 
flyovers belong in commercial zones. Like the loop. There's no way the value of our homes will ever increase when you do this. Next, you need to provide, if you haven't, other studies that you have made beyond Osceola across the country to show us in similarity how they have worked. Other than that, you're making a guess, good computerized models of how it will work and how it will affect us. But I agree with every speaker and I won't be redundant. It is a total waste of money, but it's going to deface our neighborhood. Make no mistake about that. Anyone that comes to this neighborhood to purchase a property and encounters a fly over, forget it. You are dumping homes, not you specifically, but it seems like there is no coordination between the, the, the transportation, the road, and, 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 and housing. You're dumping permits to build numerous housing. Mark Peters didn't speak of that specifically, but south of where he lives in Brighton Lake, thousands and thousands of homes. And the ones that, are talk, that, that have been spoken about, Osceola Village and the Oaks right here, it's the plans that are in place right now, even if they could work, they're 10 years behind. I beg you, I plead along with the rest of folks here, go back to your superiors and let them know how we feel and we're not feeling good. Thank you so very much for listening. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Sadler. Appreciate your, uh, your comments. I'll go ahead and uh, throw you back on mute. Uh, next to speak is uh, John Arguello. Uh, let me unmute you here, sir. Just give me one second. All right, John, you should be good to go. The floor is yours for three minutes. Uh, thank you. I'd like to thank Trisha Vanderbeck uh, and my good friend Mark Peters for so eloquently in articulating uh, the major points of the problem here. Uh, the repaving makes sense. Uh, the quadrant road makes none. The problem is so much larger than this practically insignificant road, which already exists. And now what we're gonna do is build the same road that we have, which is a little driveway to Pleasant Hill, again, at the expense of almost $12 million, um, which is essentially gonna kill a neighborhood off. Uh, I'm afraid that this road, all you'll be doing is making it more prominent and marketing it as, uh, as a road for, ever, for the traffic to go down. So as everyone has said, 80%, of traffic at our doorstep is just, it's, it's practically committing a crime against this neighborhood. How can you ensure us that the traffic we're so familiar with already on John Young Parkway won't just be relocated to our front doors? If there were, if, if all the traffic comes up, essentially where you have is, uh, we're at several minutes to get down the neighborhood, down the street, all those cars will be parked alongside that turning lane. So instead of us being able to turn into our neighborhood, we're going to have to get in line at that traffic stop, which you're going, which you're bringing from 500 to 1,000 feet. So now we're going to have to get into 1,000 foot turning lane, then make a left onto the quadrant road, and then sit in a turning lane until we eventually make it into our neighborhood. I, it's it's incredibly uh, ill designed. Can you estimate how long it's going to take? to get from one position to another, because that's probably the most important number here. There are people that spend an hour in traffic and I completely empathize with the people deeper in Point Siena who uh, really have a hard time getting road. I think I'm in, actually in support of the flyover. I think the flyover resolves the problem, uh, but we're gonna spend $12 million to create the problem for us. And I think that that's completely unfair. I, oh, by the way, I live at 1728 Boat Launch Road. Um, what, and these, it's just an incredible waste of taxpayer money. These crossroads, won't they be basically dug back up so that you can build the quadrant? So we're going to expand the road. And then a lot of this infrastructure that you're building is going to be removed so that the quadrant road could be built and then repay again to have the same thing put back in. Uh, I think that it's just an incredible waste of money. 
uh, you're probably doubling or tripling the amount of time that it takes us to get home. Uh, it, and it's just ill-conceived at best. I think many of our neighbors and friends have fallen victim to this intersection in one in more than one way. People have been hit by this car. It's a horrendous intersection. No one has done anything until now. And the plan that you're bringing is further victimizing the people who live here. So I would just appreciate it. Uh, I'm sure that this neighborhood, I'm not sure that you're so aware, but this neighborhood is one that actually puts out a lot of fighters. So I, I, I expect that it's going to be a very hard way going forward for FDOT to uh, put this road there. Thank you. Thank you very much for your, your comment, uh, Mr. Aguilo. I'll throw you back on mute here. Next to speak is uh, Jason Hurst. Give me one second, Jason. All right, Jason, if you are unmuted, you should be good to go. Uh, hi, my name is Jackson Hurst. I live at 4216 Cornell Crossing, Kennesaw, Georgia, 30144. And I highly support FDOT's decision to construct a new parallel roadway because the new parallel roadway will take traffic off of the 1792 John Young Parkway intersection in front of the Walgreens and the gas stations. And I actually also support the flyover concept, but one modification I would like to see for the flyover concept, instead of it being one lane, have it be a two lane flyover. And if you really want it to be a two lane flyover, just wait until you widen John Young Parkway, then go with the flyover concept at the John Young Parkway intersection. All right. Thank, thank you, Mr. Hirsch, for your, your comments. I greatly appreciate it. Next up uh, is Zizi. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, Zizi Caresis Agnosti. I'm, I apologize. Let me unmute you here, uh, Zizi. All right, you should be able to unmute yourself, Sizzy, and uh, okay. the floor is yours for three minutes. Can you hear me now? Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so a um, couple of things. Uh, my name is Zizzy Caceres Agostini, <laughs> and I live in 1983 Willowwood Drive. I have lived in the state, um, in the Oaks since 1998, when it actually opened a few, um, like a year after it opened. And I have lived in Florida since 1980. So that just gives you an idea how long I've lived in the in Kissimmee since 1980. So I just have a couple of, um, Eric, when you were showing the presentation, there was some conflicting because of the video does not match what the images are that you're showing. So if you look at the video, the video shows as you're exiting the Oaks, there's actually two lanes to go to the right and then one lane to go to the left or straight. But if you look at the images that you showed us on your report, none of that is showing on there. So that's that's where I'm getting a little confused to what the the final presentation would be or what the maps would look like. But in regards to the, the Oaks, the problem is not us. Um, the problem that we're issue, the issues that we're having here at the Oaks is because it's Pleasant Hill. Period. The problem is Pleasant Hill. End of story. So it looks like, and and I apologize if I'm incorrect on this. It looks like your engineers came and watched. How it is, because we've been complaining since 1998 that we have always had problems exiting the Oaks because we used to have a lot of car accidents because we didn't have a light exiting the Oaks. They added that, they made it to the, now you can only make a right turn and make a U-turn to go towards Publix. But the problem with that is our, our drivers that are going to Pleasant Hill or they get in that light by mistake, they want to make an illegal U-turn. I have seen police officers standing there and nobody stops these driving, making an illegal U-turn. So my question is this, all it looks like your, your road engineers did was stand there and say, oh, look at that. 
all of these people that don't want to wait on Junyun Parkway to take the left of Pleasant Hill, all they are, they're doing, they're actually going into the Elks and driving behind the Speedway, the Auto Zone, the Walgreens, and now they're cutting into Fernway and try to take the left to go up Pleasant Hill. So that idea was already there because people were already legally doing it. And the bad thing is, you're not alleviating the traffic issue. What you're doing is, it's just, hey guys, come this way instead. If you don't want to wait in that big old long line, come over here, but that's not fair to us. So it looks like we complain so much that you're tired of it and now you're trying to fix it, but now you're screwing our neighborhood because now our, our homes are going to go down, the prices are. And John Aguayo hit it on the nail on the head. You only made one lane to come into the Oaks. We're going to compete with everybody that wants to go to Pleasant Hill. And Eric said, oh, so they can go visit those businesses. That's not what they're doing. They're not going to those businesses. They're just trying to find another way to get on Pleasant Hill. And it's going to be unsafe for us. So I know my time is up. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much, Ms. Agnosti. Uh, this concludes our online speakers. I will now turn it back over to uh, to Nazaru Isaac to conclude the, this evening's hearing. Okay. Um, on behalf of uh, Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public hearing and providing your input on this project. If you have comments or questions after hearing, please submit them by May 27th, uh, 2021. Contact information, um, a recording of this public hearing, project documents, and other exhibits displayed at the public hearing will be posted on the resurfacing project website at www.cflroads.com slash project slash 445210-1 or the new Quadrant Road project at www.cflroads.com slash project slash 4184036-6. And we can provide that information if you want. And this concludes a public hearing and the time is uh, 7.22. Have a good evening. Thank you.